Good morning, everyone. Amen. Welcome to Numa Church uh, Sunday service as of July, uh, June 23rd. And praise the Lord. We give glory to God for His wonderful works to our church family. We thank Him for His faithfulness in our lives. May God's love light your way and continually shine with His special joy with fire in your heart. Jesus Christ is Lord. And finally, if you have any prayer request, please let us know or you can join us every Friday. We love to pray for you. I invite you to pray with us every Friday at 6 p.m. Remember, Jesus, our Lord, intercede for us. So for our Bible verse is from the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 18. Let me read it for you. Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. Amen. Let us stand. Let us pray as we continue, Father God, we thank you for the moment. Thank you for the lives and thank you for being our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Father God, we humbly ourselves before your holy presence, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whatever you see in our heart, Lord, I ask forgiveness. As I continue, Lord Jesus, to acknowledge your presence, our King of kings and the Lord of lords, Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord, my Savior, I invite you in this, in this place, Lord. Hallelujah. Let your Holy Spirit give us the love, joy, and the peace in your presence, Lord Jesus. As we celebrate, this is the day as we rejoice in your presence, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Father God, anoint this Sunday service, every plans of this um, Numa Church, Lord, in the Sunday service, let your holy presence linger to us and remind us how important to be in your presence. Hallelujah. Glory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory, glory in the name of Jesus. Father God, we ask for your anointing. Anoint our, our worship song as we praise you, Lord Jesus. Anoint our pastor as he give the message to you, Lord, to give us the wisdom, Lord, to understand it, Lord, and give us the humbled heart and teachable heart and teachable mind to understand your message. Hallelujah. Father God, you're the only one that could do miracles that no man can do, Lord Jesus. And I declare victory in the name of Jesus. And I declare your presence, hallelujah, that you will break every chain of the bondages that's stealing away our joy, that's stealing away our focus to you, Lord Jesus. Let your Holy Spirit, hallelujah, let your Holy Spirit work on us, hallelujah. Hallelujah, glory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I declare victory in the name of Jesus. And I declare your presence in this place. Hallelujah. And thank you for your love, for the ending love, Lord Jesus. You never fail us. You'll never leave us nor forsake us. Hallelujah. Glory in the name of Jesus. I declare you in the name of Jesus. Let the people say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Oh my God, it's early. Thank you, my God. 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 Thank you, Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. We wouldn't be here, oh God, without the victories that you have given us, oh God. We wouldn't be here, oh Lord God, if we did not overcome, oh Lord God. We wouldn't be here, oh God, if you have not given us a chance, another chance, oh Lord God. Thank you for all the victories, oh Lord God. Thank you for your love, oh God. All the glory and honor. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you for your We give back to you all the glory, oh God, thanksgiving and adoration in Jesus' name. Amen. Hello, everybody. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I 
hope everybody's awakened after yesterday's uh, little uh, review of gender uh, ceremony, you know, get together. And uh, all those who travel out of the country and back here again, we thank God that they're back in one piece. Yeah. Amen. Uh, this morning, um, we're going to also talk about uh, tithes and offering. Tithes and offering is uh, something that creates created to control a community to be able to govern. Without that, there's no society, no place of worship like here. Amen. Every place on earth has something to support it that keeps it going. And um, if you're looking at Leviticus, in the Leviticus uh, 27, verse 30, it says, every title of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the trees, is the Lord. It is holy to the Lord. When we tithe, we are giving back to God a portion of what we have, he has given to us. So Amen. it's a, a thing of um, showing your appreciation of how, what God has done for you throughout the week or throughout the month or throughout the year to show your gratitude to God. When we come here and give tithes and offering, it's not something that we are obligated obligated to do, but it's something that is your own wish and it's your own uh, desire to do it. So, and God is really going to multiply it because He knows that when you put this tithes and offering into the society or into the church, it's going to be something that is going to be used for the church and for the word of God. It's not just going to be wasteful. So anybody that's ready or not ready, it's okay also that we pray that in another time, they will be able to do something to show their gratitude to God's willingness of taking care of all of us. Let's all pray for this uh, little uh, inscription. Um, may the Lord bless everybody here today, yeah. those who are here and those who aren't here today. May all the families of the world come together and Lord prevent all wars and things that are going on in this world and keep peace for the rest of time. In the name of the Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. I would like to share with you the beautiful things that God did for me. That is one day when I was about to sleep, I felt dizzy. as if everything is spinning in my head. Oh no, God, is here again vertigo? That's what I said. My first instinct was to pray, declaring that the presence of the Holy Spirit be with me, that will heal me. Because on and off, since uh, last year, I suffered this vertigo. I rebuke at once my dizziness in the name of Jesus because I knew that all good things comes from God and the diseases comes from the enemy who will who uh, work is to destroy, kill, and steal. That is according to John 10, verse 10. By faith, again, I pray, I believe that God will heal me. Then, uh, I fell asleep, and when I uh, woke up that morning, by God, by God's mercy, my dizziness was gone. Yes, amen. I said, amen, Lord. And I feel better. I really feel better. Praise God, I said, praise God. You're really hearing. You really heard my prayer for help. 
You're really my rock, my refuge, my strength. And you are always, God is with me. I'm always saying that. I am with you. And not only that, during my vacation, I prepare all my medication for my vertigo. Because I don't want to happen. I was with my uh, family. So everything was settled. And nothing happened. And even in the airplane, oh, it's shaking. What you know, my sister with the shaking after that, all she ate, he vomited it. But for me and my daughter, oh God, thank you, thank you. I'm holding that. No vertigo, vertigo. Thank you, thank you so much. That's what I say. Praise God is really good. God is really good. He's really powerful. Um, this only proves that it says in Jeremiah 33, verse 6, I will bring health and healing to my people. I will let them enjoy peace and safety. That's what I believe. So let us remember, if we really pray and do not forget everything that was happened, that was given to you, the graces, the blessings, and everything, we have to thank God. Because as he said, God, everything is fast and really very, It's really very powerful. And God is always there. God is good all the time. Yes, and he, and God listens, and he answers our prayers. Yes, he really answers our prayer. So, I would like to, this is opportunity to let you know that I'm really very thankful, the Numa family, for your goodness to me. And uh, especially to... Uh, Pastor Roby, <laughs> supporting for my spiritual journey and level up my spiritual understanding of the word of God. I love you all. Thank you so much. And God bless us all. Amen. Praise God. Wow. Praise the Lord. Powerful testimony. And of course, we would like to hear for many people like that. I mean, like Ate Remy, you know, it, she's admitting that uh, growing with the Lord, I myself, I'm still growing with the Lord. Age doesn't matter. We need to grow, right? Amen. So keep pursuing God. And that's what we're going to talk about today as well for our the second last to the finale of our transformation we need to be, it's about time to be transformed. It's almost done for the transformation series that we have. So today would be the second last to our transformation series. And, and uh, I'm going to emphasize that uh, the king on the cross, what what would be like and what it is all about, the king on the cross. Today, that's what we're going to discuss. Amen. So Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for all this wonderful, wonderful testimony that all your children has this uh, utterances, oh Lord. And, and uh, again, we witness another a living testimony at the Remy, Lord, to show, oh Lord God, of who you are in their lives. I pray, Lord, to bless her. And today, we will, as upon witnessing those, Lord, we want to ask you for your presence to be with us, Lord, to see, to, to see your glory, to pour out your glory in this place for us to experience you, your presence, and the glory that you have promised to all of us. Thank you, God. We give you praise. We give you glory and honor. In Jesus Christ's name, I pray. Amen and amen. Amen. So we're going to proceed to our uh, second, to the last of our transformation series finale. All right. 
the Passover with our Lord Jesus Christ. That this was last time that we had last Sunday. Then Jesus said to them, all of you will be made to stumble because me this night, me this night for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. Jesus is all knowing. He knows his disciple and he knows all of us, our hearts and mind. He knows that we, in the times the best of his disciples will abandon him. He knows that we can fail him as the apostles did, regardless he still choose us. Now, God knows everyone, right? He knows all the things that are going to happen. He knows that Peter denied him three times. He knows that the, the disciples the, abandoned him. He knows that Judas will betray him. He knows all of that. But despite of all that, he chose them. See, God knows that you're going to fail him. God knows that, that, that you're going to be made a mistake like me. God knows you're not going to pay attention to him. But, you know, he still chooses you. He still loves you. And that's what God passion. That is what the cross is all about. Today, I'm going to emphasize that more. And in Matthew 26, Verse 56, all the disciples abandoned him, fleeing as they feared for their lives. But Jesus knew that would happen too. And he even told them so that when it happened, they could recommend that he had pro prophesied the very thing. Even in this, in this, we see the grace of God and his love for us. Jesus warned them that they would all fall away, but rather than condemn them, he prepared them from their tasks ahead. Wow. And often we think we are too strong or too mature to fail, but we are frail and none of us are here without sin. Rather than stand on our own strength, we can rely on his grace that even when we fail, he is gracious to forgive. Paul reminds us that we must not think the way, we, the way of escape. And even when we fail, Falter, he is gracious to forgive and restore according to the riches of his grace. That's how good God is. Amen? How, how can we ignore God? His love is so unconditional. The love of our Abba Father is an unconditional. He is merciful and just. And my prayers for you to love him more above all. May God continually transform us in every day of our lives as we continue to love him, loving him. Amen? Now, to me, the uh, what is all this significance of, of this uh, particular uh, word that we have here? Today, I'm going to uh, ask two kinds, uh, two things about the, the Jesus Christ as the king, uh, as the king that died on the cross. So my question first is, what is the significance of the king died on the cross or Jesus died on the cross? And, and number two is who was responsible for Christ's death, right? So let me emphasize that. What is the significance of the king died on the cross? I'm just going to give you the 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 meaning or the, the somehow like a word for it. And the uniqueness, the unusual, and the distinctiveness of death of our Lord. You know, it is the uniqueness means it's unusual. Nothing is to compare or no one like it. Nothing like it. The death, uh, maybe there's a lot of people that died on the cross or they put them on on cross to die, but it's different from everyone that died on the cross. Or even people when they died, Jesus is different when they when he died. Many people there already dead. Even some prophets, they're dead. Even some apostles, they're dead in a different way and not like Jesus. Amen. So there's some uniqueness, there's some unusual and distinctiveness. In, in the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. Now, who was responsible for Christ's death? 
Many people might think, well, probably it's Judas because he betrayed him. Many people might think, well, the thing, the chief priests, the Pharisees and the Sadducees that or the elders of the Jewish people, right? Because they, they planted, they wanted to kill Jesus. And, and many people probably talk about, like many Christians probably, well, Pilate did, and the Romans, they're the one who put him on the cross. But the, then the other one says, no, the Jewish people are. They're the one who said, crucify him. Well, some of them too believe maybe the believer's fault. Remember, he abandoned him. All the one who believes him, all the one who, de who disciple, uh, Jesus discipled these people and during that arrest, when he was arrested, uh, it was abandoned by them. They all run away from their for their lives. <laughs> That's kind of funny. So who will be, who who was responsible for his death? Let me put this one by one. Judas betrayed Jesus in Matthew six twenty six. We know that, right? And many people today are Judas like. They betrayed Jesus. <laughs> How, do you, how, how, how can we betray Jesus, right? There are many people betray Jesus. You know, I, I'm not going to uh, do stuff here and not to promote or anything like that, you know. The, this month, they made this month as Pride Month. These are the betrayal of Jesus. Many Christians participate on this thing. That is betrayal. And I, I, yeah, exactly. You know, the word title itself, pride, that's where the G, that's where Lucifer becomes Satan because of pride. And this month is not a pride month. This month is a humble month that we, we, we're going to oppose that spirit, right? that many people participate, even Christians. You, telling you, Christians, you who celebrate these things, you are actually betraying the Lord, the one that you called Savior and Lord of your life. Excuse me for this, but I am so passionate about knowing this part that I cannot compromise. Amen? Number two. Peter and the disciples denied and abandoned Jesus Christ three times. You know that story, right? The Jewish and the elders, the leaders of the Jewish people de uh, demanded for, uh, for the Romans that Jesus will be put to death. There is no doubt that the religious leaders of Israel were responsible for Jesus' death. Tell us that chief priests and the elders of the people assembled in the palace of the high priest whose name was Caiaphas, and they schemed to arrest Jesus secretly and kill him. The Jewish leader demanded of the Romans that Jesus be put to death. They couldn't continue to allow him to work signs and wonders because it threatened their position and place in the religious society. They dominated, so they plotted to take his life. Many churches today compromise. The same thing. They will allow evil things in the church for them, not. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> for them not to, to be dissolved or to be, to be gone. You know, something like there, were, there are fear. They, they have fear of losing people. They have fear of losing money. When you lose people, you lose tithes and offerings and giving, right? But I don't think so. God doesn't need those money. He needs the heart of people. You give that money so that this ministry will be continued and will be sustained. 
and all of us can grow spiritually together, right? It's not, and for and and for that, say for having said that, it, it is not about for some people to give, but it is for the advancement of His kingdom, right? Today, I, I will see those many people compromise, you know, and actually they they use silvers to pay for the life of Jesus. They gave it to Judas. And Judas was betrayed because he was possessed by the demon because he allowed it, right? Now, the next thing is the Romans. The Romans uh, words, right? They uh, were the ones who actually crucified him. And crucifixion was a Roman method of execution, authorized and carried out by the Romans under the authority of Pontius Pilate during Jesus Christ's time. And Roman governor was sentenced Jesus. Roman soldiers drove the nails into his feet and, and troops directed the cross and a Roman soldier pierced his side. So actually Pontius Pilate, he did not find any Miss wrong or any crime that Jesus committed. So that's why I'm not taking responsible for this, for the blood of this man. So he was his hand in front of them. But the truth is, he still have the authority to do it. But because he was feared that he was be, he will be put away, put out, or he will be uh, take out from, from his position as a governor, he did, he did not compromise that part. What he compromised is that he knows that Jesus didn't do anything, but he still gave that authority or still give that command to kill Jesus, to put him on the cross. If you are a judge today, what would you do? If you see a man that, that plead no guilty at the same time, you, it, it, it was found no guilty, and then you're gonna verdict him to be to be hang or to be you know to be killed. You know that is that is his sentence. Then, as a judge, do you how how do you, how do you feel? feel? Yeah, how how do you how do you say that you will be able to still? can have that job. I will resign. I will resign. If somebody told me, if I, if I found out that the, this man has no, is not guilty of anything that he did or anything that been accused with, I will resign. And because they were telling me that he needs to be put in death. He needs to be put on, 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 on that sentence to, be, to die. And, and that is not right. We need to just, I think if I will be the judge to do that, I will be resigning. I'm not going to declare or, or give him the sentence to death, to die, right? Because he's not guilty. But because of my position and money, then I will make him that person die, even if he's guilty. You hear me? That's what Pontius Pilate did. No matter what, I don't care what he said, that is not, I will wash my hand. <laughs> That's not true, right? Now, and the last thing is the people of Israel. Yeah. The people of Israel, we also, we are, we're, we're also complicit in the death of Jesus. They were the ones who shouted, crucify him, crucify him, as he stood on trial before Pilate. <laughs> they also cried for the tip of for the tip Barabbas to be released instead of Jesus. That's what they did. Yeah. Today, what we are crying out, what we are crying out, are we crying out that the Lord is true, that the gospel is real, or are we crying, or are we just or are we just crying out, yes, let's celebrate for all these famous people? Right? Like Barabbas. Now, let's find out what happened on the cross before we're just making conclusion. What is, what is all these things that, you know, I got a couple of questions. Remember the significance of, of, of 
the king on the cross and and the uh, and the, also the uh, uh the who are who are the responsible uh for this uh death of Jesus Christ on the cross now if you look at in the scripture in Matthew 27 starting verse uh 32 to 55 i guess i'm not going to write it um not going to read it all because we're running out of time so let's uh, so the story is that the king um jesus was be the king on the cross you know uh was, was be the called king as the mocker as, as a mock to that to him they put a uh, Inri and the Inri called uh, uh, the Inri means you know I R I N R I is the Latin word for um, for um, the in uh, Jesus Nazarenus Rex Judailurum. That's represent the Latin inscription from John nineteen nineteen and Matthew twenty seven thirty seven, which is in English translates Jesus the Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Now, they put that title. It's not because they're recognizing he's the King of the Jews. It's actually mocking him literally. That is their motive. They put that title. How many of you know? How many of you think that way? They put that title because they're recognizing he's real, the King of the Jews. No, they're not. They're not recognizing him as the King of the Jews. They mocking him as the King of the Jews. Yeah. They're they're actually doing that. And literally, you know, if they, how can you mock a King of the Jews? How can you say if it's the King, you put him on the cross? And if he's the King, why you is why you take lot on his on his clothes and make him naked, put him to shame, right? That's what happened. And, and that, is, that is something that we look at, you know? If you look at these things, it, it's just so powerful to look at. That's why I would say, what is the significance of Jesus Christ dying on the cross? What is that uniqueness and unusual things, the distinctive things of the death of Jesus Christ? on the cross. Number one, if you look at this, it's very remarkable to me when this, um, when this <coughs> in, in 54, can you put it down Kuya, on the last part? On verse 54, yeah, keep going. See like on the verse 50, <coughs> yeah, that's, no, 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 Kuya. Okay, <coughs> that's, excuse me. On verse 54, and coming uh, on the last part, yeah, next, next one, next one, no, not next one, down, down, one more. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, next, there you go. This is verse 54. If you look at this, when the centurion and, and, and above and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake, and the things that had happened, they feared greatly, saying, truly, this was the Son of God. See? To me, that statement, truly, was the Son of God, is remarkable. How many people that you witnessed dead or died, they make a legendary thing, but never been. This is the difference for all. This is the unusual thing that people recognize at the end of his life on the cross, they, somebody said, or many, they said, truly, this was the Son of God who witnessed the death on the cross, the death of Jesus Christ. They never said that to other two criminals, and they never seen this before. They're probably these Roman soldiers they they witness a lot of people that been they put them on the cross because that is their style of putting people sentenced to death. That's their style to put them on the cross to kill them on the cross. But never seen like this. One thing that what makes them said that because number one, Jesus was not accused of a typical crime. They know that. Rather, he stood trial before Pilate for being king of the Jews. 
Even after hearing the accusation and asking Jesus about them, Pilate determined that Jesus had done any evil. See, that's number one. He was put dead on the cross. He was sentenced to death, but he has no crime. Wow. Right? But the clamor for Jesus to be crucified was so great that Pilate handed Jesus over for crucifixion. Crucifixion. Wow. Number two, Jesus showed meekness and humility. Despite of all these mockeries, despite of all these insults, Jesus still humbled himself and become meek. Right? Meekness, become humble, become vulnerable, but at the same time, never argue someone else. But rather, he showed that how the love of God is unconditional, despite of argument, in spite of people mocking him. Remember, they mock him like, well, if he is the son of God, well, he will, he will come down. He will save himself. You know, how come, he, how come he saved everyone else, but he cannot save himself? Really? Yeah, that's what they said. So Jesus received mockeries and insult on the cross, and many celebrated his crucifixion. <laughs> how many people celebrated today? Who are these people that celebrated crucifixion? It was when Jesus was crucified, the cha charge written above his head was he was the king of the Jews. The mockeries of continual on the lookers recall that he had have reference tearing down the temple and rebuilding it three days, prophesying that he would die and be resurrected. They recall that he had claimed to be the son of God. And yet they mock him as, his, as if his claim were not true. The chief priest, scribe, and elders mock him, saying that if he simply would come down from the cross, they would believe in him. See? Many people today, how many people today mock Jesus, or someone like, well, if your God is real, why you're still sick? Well, if God is real, why you why you still have cancer? Right, like me. Well, I tell you, God is real with or without cancer. You know, I'm still breathing. I'm still having this sight. I'm still having this smell. I'm still having this earring. I'm still having all this feeling and emotion and all that kind of stuff. And I can still walk. I still emotion. Uh, I can be in, 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 a, in, in a way that God really established me as a man. I am no somehow problematic that many people has killed themselves, almost killed themselves or committing suicide or become depressed because of their panic, because of their fear, because of their worry. I'm not like that. See, that's the thing about having relationship with the Lord. Amen. That's, what the, that's where the people that were saying, they're not denying and they're not rejecting the Lord Jesus Christ. And those people that questioning God's or Jesus uh, as the son of God, as the Messiah, I'm telling you the truth, and I'm sorry to tell you the truth, you know, but this is the truth I have to tell you. Uh, if you reject the Jesus, you will not see the glory of God. You will not see the glory of God. And many people rejecting it by just simply on our action and deeds, by just simply on our whatever the things that are activities every day in our lives. You know, you know what your activities. How many people choose to work more than hours that they have and live Jesus, what Jesus called them to? Right? Now, 
what is remarkable to me, it, it is something that someone witnessed the death of Jesus Christ saying, this is the truly the Son of God. How many of you experience that moment in your life that you will confess and declare truly that Jesus Christ is the Messiah? Truly, Jesus Christ is what I need. If you do experience that, that is powerful to look at in your life. And we need that every day. Be hungry for that. <clears throat> well, many people may be asking this. Why God did not literally kill Jesus? Have you ever asked that? So that Jesus will not suffer on the cross? Why God allowed him to put to death by the hands of the Jews and Romans? Why did God allowed those things to happen to Jesus, to suffer, to be killed, to be put dead on the cross. You know why? Because God wants to emphasize his sovereign knowledge as he allowed people to brutally and unlawfully murder his son. This man was handed over to you by God's lips. In, in Acts 22, Two, verse 23, 24, it says, This man was handed over to you by God's deliberately planned and foreknowledge, and you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. While God did not stop people from physically killing Jesus, he also did not allow death to have the final say. But instead, God raised him from the dead freeing him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. What is the purpose of all of this that God's, he knows all of these things to happen and he knows he made this plan for people to see what kind of human being we are. Have you recognized that, that we are sinner? We are fall short to the glory of God. No one is perfect and holy. We are all the same. So be humble. Don't put yourself into pedestal that he needs to humble for me first before I will humble to him. No, that's not what God did. Jesus, he humbled himself no matter what. That's what he said right there. That's what he did. Instead of arguing with people, Instead of arguing what who, who mocked him, who who throw stone on him, who 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 whipped him, who slapped him on the face, who who spit on him, who did that, who all who did those things, he did not argue with them. Even on that person on the cross that he said, you know, if you really are true the Son of God, then come down and save yourself. Did he say not? Did he say something to that person? No, he did not. But rather, he just kept quiet. But look at the other person and said, Lord, remember me. And then he said, today you will be with me in paradise. We should be like that, always humble, like that man on the cross too. He said, Lord, remember me. I recognize and acknowledge you. You hear me? That's what we should be like. You know, I am no perfect myself. I am no holy as you are, but as much as possible, I would like to take a step to be like Jesus because that's what we are called to be as human beings because we're all filthy. The reason why Jesus, why Jesus was put dead on the cross, who is the responsible for all of it? It's not just Judas. It's not just the Roman soldier. It's not just uh, the the. Jews or the elders of the Jews is not the disciple or who denied Jesus and abandoned Jesus. It is us. We are sinners. It is us who is responsible that Jesus was died on the cross, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lord, just because of our sin. You know, today some refuse to recognize Jesus. That he was the son of God even after he was raised from the dead. Today, the same way we will see many people will reject Jesus. They reject, they continue rejecting Jesus. 
and they putting him still on the cross. All those, it, it says in Romans 5, 8 and 6, 23, all who have come to Christ in faith are guilty of his blood shed, shed on the cross for us. He died to pay the penalty of our sin. That's what Romans 6, 23 says is that uh, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. It was our sins that nailed Jesus on the cross. Remember that. Christ's death and resurrection was part of God's perfect plan to eternally redeem all who believe in him. For those who of you who believe in Jesus Christ, you are redeemed. For those who rejected Jesus Christ, I'm sorry to tell you this is the truth. You will not be redeemed. You will go straight to hell when you died. But if you believe and, and accept him and embrace him, that he is your Lord and Savior, then you will be redeemed and obey and trust him. Amen. Now, Jesus' sacrificial death on the cross provides salvation for all who trust him as we believe. To tell you, this is what we have to earn in grace. The grace I call the salvation the eternal salvation. How many of you desire for that? How many of you desire to be in eternal life? You know, Jesus is not, to tell you the truth, the one that says, Inri, the king, Jesus is the king of the Jews. That's mockery. But to tell you the truth, this is it. Jesus is not the king of the Jews, but he is the king of kings. So thank God they didn't put that title. They just put the king of the Jews. But the true title of Jesus Christ, what is the truth? He is the king of all kings. That means whoever that the presidents or whoever kings or have this power, all of this word, he is still above all of them. Right? And... And we have, through this king of kings, that on the cross, we earn this great salvation to have eternal life. And with that saying, with that saying, I, I, we have to, that, that I called it grace. And so let, so let, that means we have to let, uh, you are letting him to reign in your heart and acknowledging him to be the Lord of your life. And, and this is what it is all about. Right? When you, when you have this grace, you are committing into a relationship. When you're committing to a relationship with Jesus, you are letting him reign in your heart. Is Jesus reigning in your heart today? If you are having relationship with him, you, Jesus will be the Lord of your life. Is Jesus is the Lord of your life? Is Jesus, uh, are you letting Jesus reigning in your heart? That's my point. That is the point of grace. To let Jesus reign in your heart and to let Jesus to be the Lord of your life. Now, that is relationship. You are committing relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And when you have that relationship, what is essential into relationship? When you said, I'm committing myself and letting God to reign in my heart and letting the Lord to be the Lord of my life. What is the essential of relationship? The essential of that relationship is, is one of the important things in a relationship is communication. Communication, you know, communication is a two-way, listening and hearing. You know, you can't just talking, you can't just talk, 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 but you need to hear. That's communication. Now, the same thing in every kind of relationship, we need to have that 
in our relationship to have communication. What is more powerful to think about is that Jesus communicate even on the death on the cross. He communicate the fa to Father and to the people, right? He made a statement, and, and, and this must be our desire and purpose. Now, in relationship, if you don't communicate, you don't value the person. If you don't communicate with God, you don't value God. What I mean by communication? Talking and listening. If you don't talk to the Lord, you disvalue him. You don't value him. You don't really love him. And if you don't listen to God, the same way. So you need to talk and listen to the Lord, to hear his voice. And that's how you value him. Same thing with our re relationship with others. If you value your parents, you need to talk to them and listen to them. If you value your brothers and sisters, you need to talk and listen to them. If you value one another yeah, as a church, as a, as a brother and sister in Christ, we should talk and listen to each other. You hear me, folks? This is what this relationship is all about. King on the cross, the plan of God is for us. Why is the king would be on the cross? You know why? Because of that relationship. Wants to establish. Because that one is being taken by the enemy. As what Nani Remy talked about it, John 10.10, 10, that Jesus said, the enemy is, it came to steal to kill and to destroy. And he did that in our relationship with God. Remember in Genesis chapter 2, when men fall into sin, he destroyed, he killed, and he still the relationship between God and man. Jesus was hanging on the cross, was put dead on the cross because he wanted to restore that relationship. Now, in order for us to, to reestablish that restoration, we need to communicate with our Lord. If we wanted to establish that relationship with God and to solidify it, we need to communicate with our Lord, not just every other day, not just when you want it, not just when you feel it. Must be always, must be every day to be hungry, to be purposely saying, I am committed to talk to the Lord and I'm committed to hear God's voice. Amen. Let's stand. Hallelujah. How many of you say, Lord, today is my commitment once again to you, you for my relationship with you? If you do, just put that in your heart. It's between you and God to make that commitment to him. Lord, I want to talk to you more. Lord, I want to listen to you more. Lord, I want to commit my day, my second, my every minute, my every, uh, everything that I do, Lord. I'll do it for your glory. Lord, it is something that I can look up on the cross, what you have done unconditionally. You humble and obey the Father till death on the cross because of me. Today, I will respond the same way. I want to humble myself and obey you till death, until the last breath that I have. Lord, you heard our cry. You heard my cry, God, personally. That's my heart. That's my prayer. Until the last breath, Lord, I will say, I would like to talk to you more and to hear more of you, to know you more, Lord, passionately and eagerly and hunger 
with hunger in my heart, with, with fire, O oh Lord God, that you sent through the Holy Spirit. Let it be to your all people today, wherever listen to this message of yours. God, I just pray that you will pour out that glory in the lives of your people right now. May the Lord pour out this blessing upon you. May his grace and mercy will be upon you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, love, joy, and hope of eternal. As we keep walking in this world that full of darkness, let God reign in your heart. Let Jesus be the Lord of your life so that you will shine. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. He has delivered me from all fear. He has set my feet upon the rock. I will not be moved in the say of the Lord. You are my sheep, my strength, my portion, deliverer, my shelter, strong tower. My very present help in time of need. Whom have I in heaven but you? There's none I desire beside you. You have made me glad, and I'll say of the Lord, you are my shield, my strength. My portion, deliverer, my shelter, strong tower, my very present help in time of need. I will not be moved, and I'll say of the Lord, you are my shield, my strength, my portion, deliverer, my shelter, strong tower, my very present help in time of need. My very present help in time of need.